so I am here with Tom. Yes. Uh, yes. Tom Fritchie. <laughs> so what was it? Tom Fritchie. Tom Fritchie. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad we're, go we're going to bring some friends and community members back home. So I feel good about that. But, um, but it, it remains heartbreaking and mind-boggling that we have to do this. And um, so why can you kind of explain your relation to migrant justice and this whole crew? Yeah, definitely. So I'm the first director of the Milkwood um, Dignity Standards Council, which is the human rights monitoring group that Migrant Justice has founded in order to implement the... Oh, should we pause for a sec? Yeah. Here, sorry. Yeah, so, uh, so I'm the first director of the Milkwood Dignity Standards Council, which is the third party human rights monitoring organization that's been established in order to implement Migrant Justice's Book with Dignity program. Uh, you know, we're set up, you know, oh, sorry, I'm giving a call, I just want to make sure it's not, uh, I think I'm, sorry. No, it's good. Well, it's not. Yeah. yeah. So I'm the first director of the Milkwood Dignity Standards Council, which is the human rights monitoring group that has been set up to implement Migrant Justice's Milkwood Dignity program. Or will be um, actually doing audits and, and you know, talking to workers and farmers on the farms about the conditions and making sure that the farms are working towards compliance with the Code of Conduct, which is the set of labor and housing conditions that farm workers, through a long process that, uh, that Migrant Justice has, has organized, um, have defined as what's required in order to milk with dignity. Um, but in the midst of all this, uh, you know, building the program, getting it ready to, to launch and, and be ready to receive calls from workers and talk to farmers and have, have all the tools needed to run the program, mm -hmm. uh, it's been really jarring to see basic rights like this come under attack from the federal government. Uh, it, it feels like a very serious moment where a lot is at stake, honestly, for our democracy. Mm -hmm. This is exactly why the First Amendment exists, is so that people can speak up about the rights of vulnerable groups, mm -hmm. and people can try to improve uh, their communities, and mm -hmm. can do so without fear of reprisal from the richest and the most powerful in our society. Uh, and, and we're seeing that principle tested right now in a very serious way. And, uh, and so I'm, it's been really heartwarming to see so many folks come together, uh, not just on the bus today, but really from around the country to support Kike Suli and Alex yeah. uh, and win their freedom, uh, one of the most basic human rights. And, and how are you feeling kind of going into this? I think, uh, so I, I'm also a lawyer and, and I, I think there's a part of me that, that feels based on my past experience as a lawyer, including sometimes in immigration court, this should go well, this, this should be a very easy issue. Uh, <laughs> The three folks have no criminal convictions, and um, the immigration judge most likely, I think, will look at that on its own and say, well, why are they even here? And then when you add on top of that the fact that they will be supported by over a hundred letters, and not, not form letters, not petition signatures, there's 10,000 petition signatures, but over a hundred individualized, well-written, detailed letters um, from community members, friends, family. And, and others um, coming in to support that. And I am optimistic that the judge will, will understand that the only way to do justice is to set them free immediately. Uh, and so that, that's my hope. But, but at the same time, there's a part of me that's a little bit scared because I, uh, ICE is a very powerful agency and, and their power has been augmented. And, uh, and it, it feels very much like a moment in which ICE is out to, to really go all out um, for folks who are speaking up for their rights in our community. And so, so I, I am, I'm not ready to uh, to celebrate their freedom until until they are free. And if there were like one message that you could tell all three of them right now, what would it be? Uh, I just really want them to, to see how much love there's been from their community, and, uh, from a really broad, uh, broad and deep uh, sense of solidarity of folks who are outraged 
judged and saddened by their arrest and people who were pulling from them, pulling for them um, to, to get their freedom back as soon as possible. It's really, it's really heartwarming that, that even in a, a dark time, there, there's a lot of light to be seen from from people coming together to, to stick up for what's right. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate it. <laughs> Can <laughs> you just state who you Hi. are? And... My name is Lee Marie Dita. I am the wife of Alex. Happy to be Cool. And um, so how are you feeling today? I feel optimistic that things are going to turn out the way they should be. Mm -hmm. Hopefully by tonight or tomorrow I have my husband home. Mm. And um, what, um, can you just give me like a little bit of a, a background on kind of what happened with Alex? when he was taken or yeah, whatever you're comfortable with? Um, well, he was taken March 15th. Mm -hmm. um, we were on our way to the um, Edward J. Shepherd Court, I believe that's what it's called. Um, we, were, we were on our way, it was a stormy blizzard. Mm. And um, we were optimistic because at the time I, I found out I was pregnant, so in the morning we, um, we went to we went to um, McDonald's, we had some food, um, then we were on our way to the court, um, we were trying to find a parking spot, and they kind of like stopped in front of us, a SUV stopped right in front of us, and somebody got out of the car, I thought, you know, maybe somebody's trying to help us, you know, at first I thought I thought it was somebody that was trying to help us, but, but then I realized, you know, I remembered something, um, and then I said to my husband, babe, that's ice. And he said no. And I said yeah. And then soon enough, the guy opened the door and showed his ice badge and told him to get out of the car. Um, I stayed as strong as I could for him. Um, I didn't have a license, so uh, I, I asked ice officer. I said, hey, now what do I do? Are you going to take him to the court? What are you going to do? What's the plan? He goes, well, there are options. That's what he, I was told that there were many options. And I said, okay, okay. And I felt optimistic. You know, maybe, you know, they just want to question him or something, you know. And, um, but he said, Let, follow me. You know, it was the middle of a blizzard. I don't have a license. And they made me drive from Burlington all the way to St. Albans, but I did not do that. I, I waited until I got, I, wait, I went to Williston mm -hmm. um, to, for my dad to pick me up. Mm -hmm. And we went to St. Albans and I saw him and pretty much he was so, like his soul was just out of his body. Like he was not the Alex I knew. He was very upset and he lost all hope. and pretty much um, I told him not to, that we were going to fight for him, his release. Um, and that was the last time I heard from him for like a day or so. That's when he was moved to Stafford. Mm -hmm. And two days later they picked up uh, Enrique and Sully. And um, so how, like, how have you been, you know, staying strong throughout this time? Like how, like how is all of this really making you feel? I know you touched upon that, but um, I feel a mad more than anything mm -hmm. because I feel like he was doing the right thing and going to court and trying to fix his his, his mess, his mix up. Right. And he, and I'm just upset because I just wish that now people are going to stay in the shadows, they're not going to fix whatever they need to fix because of this happened. You know, um, it's been, like like I said, it's been really tough on my family. Um, mm -hmm. I actually had a miscarriage uh, that Sunday. I'm so sorry. Um, Sunday morning I had a miscarriage. So, I mean, just like all these issues, my pressure has been going up, you know. Mm -hmm. and it's just been a difficult time, especially for my family. Especially for our daughter. Yeah. She's four. And so how, um, what do you hope to come out of today? I hope all three get a minimum bond. Mm -hmm. I hope that they come 